about tomorrow before we drown in sorrow I am afraid can no longer hide the Jerusalem the 5,000 year old city that has resonated at the core of the three Abrahamic religions is facing a new battleground in the last century one that dances to the tunes of national sentiments the ancient religious attachments to the city now resonate with a new undertone that is manifested through and constitutive of the area's two fledgling national identities. Israeli, that at the moment ruled Jerusalem east and west as its capital, and Palestinian, that regard the east side of the city as the capital of the future Palestinian state. Jerusalem means to me a mother country. Yeah, it's my mother country. Um, I, born, I was born here and uh, I, stu I studied here, I gra graduated here, I have a big number of friends here, so I can't go anywhere. Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as I'm a Christian, of course it will have a big meaning for me, as like a holy place. Uh, I respect what the Jews think about Jerusalem and what the Muslims and Christians think about it and I guess it should be open to all of us and not just the Jews because we are Israelis. This Israeli liberal secular voice should not be taken to represent the entirety of the feeling gamut concerning the east side of the city and the city as a whole. The unification of both sides of the city under Israeli rule in 1967 was a founding moment in Israeli national identity that manifested itself both in emotional outbursts of euphoria and in actual legislation. Since 1980, for example, Israel, that has no constitution but rather several basic laws, declared united and complete Jerusalem as its undivided capital. Sharing Jerusalem? I don't mind. I I would even love to do that if it, w if it solved the problems, so it's a good idea, I think. I think Jerusalem should not be split, like each side separated, the Israelis alone and the Palestinians alone. I think it should be shared because when you're living with the Israelis like, and communicating, then you make a change. And I think it should be shared between us because they have a holy place, we have a holy place, Christians have a holy place. And that's why we all should be living in it. We ha should have the same rights, the same human rights. Why, why doesn't it be all New Jerusalem and all live together, Arabs and Jewish? I, I don't know if, uh, if both sides can really, can really find a solution. Jerusalem, especially Jerusalem, I don't, there, I don't think there will be a, a solution for it. I don't know. Sure, they tried uh, different times before to do, but till now they didn't find a solution. So, I Sadly, Rafik's and Alex's disbelief is not unjustified. To say that the Jerusalem issue has been stagnating would be an understatement. The contested eastern side is mainly Palestinian, and it contains the old city in which Muslim, Christian and Jewish holy sites exist in very close proximity. Since the unification of Jerusalem under Israeli rule in 1967, Israel has built many Jewish neighborhoods in the east side of the city as an assertion of the fact that indeed the United City, not just the West, is the capital of the Jewish state. Although the international community perceives East Jerusalem as an occupied territory just as the West Bank, in Israeli mainstream consciousness, East Jerusalem is legitimately Israeli. It was not until recently, when Israel decided to settle Jewish families in strictly Palestinian neighborhoods, such as Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan, that this forgiving state of mind started to both bifurcate and shift. right-wing activists are sending out a clear message, both to the Arab residents of this neighborhood and to North America's special envoy to the region, George Mitchell. They will never give up East Jerusalem. The Israeli left, on the other hand, has been systematically demonstrating in Sheikh Jarrah to manifest the exact opposite sentiment. Not once, these demonstrations ended with Israeli Jewish citizens arrested by Israeli police. <laughs> to 
To make matters even more complicated, in 2002, Israel decided to construct a separation wall between itself and the West Bank. Both east and west sides of Jerusalem ended on the Israeli side of the barrier, thus cutting the city off the Arab population in the West Bank and making it difficult to enter Jerusalem from it. I mean, for me, living in Bethlehem and every day having to cross the checkpoint and I had a lot, because I, my school was in Jerusalem, my friends were in Jerusalem, all my activities or my extracurriculum activities were in Jerusalem, so I had to go to Jerusalem every day, evening, morning, and all the time. And um, it's part of my life to, to, to cross the checkpoint, actually. So it's, yeah, that's how a really Palestinian, who, who I, that's how I knew who I am. The truth, the conflict doesn't influence, you know, directly on my life, but if I, if I want to go to mall, so I need to do security check. There are places that are not so safe for me in Israel. And in the past there were, you know, bombs and people were killed. Every day, uh, every day I hear the helicopter, every day I see M16, <laughs> every day I see the conflict in my eyes. Me personally, no one died for my family, but I feel the conflict in my life. You can talk to the Palestinians so they can tell you how they suffer, and every one of us suffer in a different way. Like I have a kid in my class that his family died, and I'm thinking about maybe in the future I want to go to study in the U.S. or, in, or something. And I just can't leave this situation in Israel like this because it's my home. And I know it's also the Palestinians' home. In the year 2000, I guess, they built the separation wall. And my home uh, was part of the West Bank. So it's not Jerusalem anymore. It became part of the West Bank. And there I had a brother, and uh, he was really sick at that time, really sick, and he needed like to go to the emergency. And then we could not move or go to the hospital, like really good hospitals in Jerusalem. So I lost my brother. I really lost him. We could not get transportation and go over there. We could not pass from one point to another, just due to the wall that is separating people apart and destroying villages in between. This year I'm going to the army. I'm, I still, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do in the army, but I think something with Arabic, because I learn Arabic in school. Maybe. Serving in the army is really important. I think it's something that um, everyone should do. Everyone that lives here should do, because it's really important. It's helping and it's serving and defending and, and our country, so we need that. Uh, Terrorists. Terrorists let them go to the army. They work against Palestinians. Do you think that will affect your friendships? Somehow, yeah. So, how does one get over that? Mm. If they don't go to the army. <laughs> Have you ever seen Alex in her uniform? At the mall. At the mall. <laughs> at the, the mall. Yeah. The, uh, I think it was really funny because I was not expecting to see her. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I hugged her. <laughs> I ran to hug her. Well, first I thought, is this, this could be weird, right? No, no, it doesn't matter. It's serene. The youth interviewed for this documentary engaged in a dialogue group called Artsbridge. Artsbridge brings together Israeli and Palestinian youth through artistic activities and guided dialogue groups. For three weeks each year, Palestinian and Israeli youth eat, sleep, and create together, sharing the similarities and the differences in their lives. It's not necessarily for to make peace and to have like a wonderful life and live in La La Land. <laughs> it's um, it's just knowing the other side. It's what matters. I mean, because all I know is the, the soldiers on the checkpoint and the government and the decisions they make and the 
the more rules they make against us. It's interesting to know those people, to learn from them, because otherwise I'm not, I don't think I'm going to meet Israeli Jews. Really, I learned a lot. I, I met Palestinian and Druzian uh, people, and I learned facts and things that I didn't know about their life and about even about my country and even about myself. Small groups uh, c keep continuing to know each other, Palestinian and uh, Israeli. There could be a peace, that's what I think. Because every small group will be a big group. Yeah. I'm not saying I know everything, maybe. I don't know everything that's done by my army of Israel. And I guess I'm not, I don't know like what's true, what's false. I, can't say that I know it, but I really want to know the truth, if there's one, and then. I think we should never stop. We should always like continue and try to do our best, because peace, it's what's best for us. It's what is right. It's what's better for all humans, I think. بالمنصير مجرد ذكرى أنا بخاف ما بخبي هدأت بتوجع قلبي